Since committing is a conscious choice and is new to most designers, a couple questions that we hear often are, when should I commit and how frequently should I commit? In this video, we'll go over some general guidance on how to know when it's a good time to make a commit, how often that might happen, and how to write good commit messages. Remember from a previous video that saving and committing are two different things. Saving a file stores the changes on your computer, while committing pushes those changes to abstract. You can also save your changes and then close the file, or quit abstract completely, and those changes will be there for you the next time you open the file from abstract. However, your saved changes won't be backed up should something happen to your computer, and your team won't have access to the designs until you commit. One easy way to think about committing is to imagine that you're telling a story. The power of committing is in tracking the journey of your design changes over time, no matter what those changes are. By keeping the story of the design in mind, you will be able to make meaningful commits about what unit of work was completed. You don't have to complete the entire feature in order to commit since the design process often takes days, weeks, or even months, but your commits should contribute to the ongoing story about that product or deliverable. Sometimes you might find the need to commit even if it doesn't add to the story, and that's also fine. It's normal to sprinkle in other commits when you need to fix a problem, stash an idea, clean up and remove things from a file, or finalize the visual details. There are no rules about what's going to work for every single team when it comes to committing frequency. It's important to commit early to provide transparency for your team and to get feedback from the beginning. It's also a good idea to commit often, and that should vary per person, product, team, or task. Generally, if you're working in a branch every day, you should commit at least once per day because you've likely completed some measurable change. Once you are ready to commit, you have the option of adding a title and description to your work. We discussed earlier how this gives you a great opportunity to document what you've been thinking about and why you made these changes. We recommend that you give your commits a title that will help you understand the story of how that work was progressing even if you're looking at it several weeks or months later. Think to yourself, if my teammate were to open this and read only this commit, would they get it? Would they know what I was doing? When your whole team agrees to a naming convention for commit titles, you'll also be able to scan through other people's work and understand at a glance what they were working on. Here are a few examples of good commit titles. Each one tells the viewer what feature or functionality was added during this stage of the design process. You can also see that some of these are complex, so it might have taken a few hours or even a few days to complete, whereas others are pretty small and might have only taken a few minutes. The commit description will be displayed when you click on any commit in the commit history view, so this is your opportunity to provide any missing context that the commit title didn't convey, to communicate a story around your design work, to explain how and why the decisions were made, to show when and where consensus was reached, and to list who else provided input. Here are some of the things you should consider when writing a commit description. Generally, we like to think about the what and the why. So what has changed? What problems were you solving? Or what decisions did you make? And why did you make those decisions? All of this should help you write good commits that are useful for yourself and your team.